a storm wind. Beautiful. Nostalgic. Hungry? Over the last 20 years, World of Warcraft's favorite city has changed, not only in appearance, but in population density. Everyone lives here, from your standard dwarves and gnomes in Old Town, to a variety of extraplanetary beings, to a suspiciously long list of anthropomorphic species. As I looked around the city, I began to wonder, how does Stormwind feed all these people? From that question sprouted several more. How much food does Stormwind eat per day? What kinds of food are grown in the area? Is the population of Stormwind sustainable? With that, I began my descent into a rabbit hole of rigorous research, all to answer a question that no one has asked before. Where does Stormwind's food come from? Before we can begin in earnest, here's my 5 second Patreon pitch. Get all videos 2 days early and ad free for only $1 a month. It's the best deal in town. Now, to answer the question in the title, we have to begin by simply determining how many people live in Stormwind. To be clear, I'm not interested in treating the in-game city as the representation of Stormwind in the lore. Stormwind ostensibly houses hundreds of thousands of people, depending on which non-canon source you use. The lore of Warcraft is fickle enough without questions of population, so it's understandable that there isn't an official number here to work with. Unfortunately, that means treating the in-game representation as the literal representation by counting every single denizen individually. That's right. I scoured every alley, every basement, every conceivable corner of Stormwind until I figured out the exact number of NPCs living in the city, all for the sake of answering this completely ridiculous question. You're welcome. So let's start with the census. You might find this interesting, I certainly did. Stormwind is home to 665 humans, 66 dwarves, 45 gnomes, 39 lightforged draenei, 40 night elves, 27 void elves, 23 drakthir, 18 pandaren, 18 draenei, 14 undead, 11 earthen, 8 worgen, 8 cult terrans, 8 high elves, 7 trolls, 6 ethereals, 5 dragonkin, 4 mechanomes, and 1 goblin. But those are just the, uh, what do you call them, humanoid denizens. We can't forget the 24 griffins, 14 horses, 13 dogs, 10 dragon turtles, 6 cats, 6 cows, 5 otherwise unclassified large animals, 1 dinosaur, and 1 one adorable panda. Altogether, we have a grand total of 1,093 NPCs living in Stormwind. But how many of them eat? Let's make some amendments to the list. First, we can remove the ethereals because I'm almost positive that they don't have digestive systems hidden under those bandage wraps. Second, there are 14 Knights of the Ebon Blade that, to my knowledge, are not alive, so we can exclude them. Third, we can just remove the mechanomes from the game at this point. Lastly, two of the Night Elves are these spirits keeping this portal open, and they look transparent enough to be disinterested in sandwiches, so we'll scratch them off the list. That's a total of 26 non-eaters, bringing our total down to 1,069 things that eat in Stormwind. We could get a bit more granular if we wanted to. These seven trolls are in a standoff with Stormwind guards in the harbor, so it's hard to imagine that the city would provide food rations to them. Additionally, the 11 earth in the city do eat, but they specifically eat these rocks that you can buy in Dornagall, making their inclusion in the list dubious. Now, the difficult part, determining the daily caloric consumption of the 1,069 eaters of Stormwind. I mentioned that there are 665 humans in Stormwind, but that's a little too general for my liking. Let's get more specific. Of the 665 humans living in the city, 272 are members of the Stormwind Guard in some capacity or other. We're talking patrollers, griffin riders, royal guards, officers, and so on. Of the remaining 393, 41 are children, leaving 352 human adults in Stormwind. This section of the population is going to be our baseline, since we have to make a lot of assumptions about the dietary necessities of other species. Let's break it down. According to the National Institute of Health, adult males and adult females should consume between 2600 to 28 800 calories and 2,000 to 2,200 calories, respectively. For children between the ages of 11 and 12 years, which is to my estimation the perpetual age of all children living in Stormwind, the recommendation is 1,800 to 2,200 calories per day. This number is significantly higher for military personnel, of whom the males require 3,600 calories and the females require 2,800 calories to meet energy demands. Were you guys ready to do a little bit of math? I bet you weren't. First, we determine the average of these caloric requirements, which is easy enough. 2,700 for adult males, 2,100 for adult females, and 2,000 for children. Second, we split the population of adults and children living in Stormwind to reflect the two genders. You know, body type A and body type B, which means that there are 176 adult males and 176 adult females. Since we have an odd number of children in Stormwind, and I really don't want to use decimals for this, we're going to use the global human population of Earth, which has slightly more males, to justify rounding the number of male children upwards for a 21 to 20 split. Also, it's my video and I can do whatever I want. Finally, we whip out our trusty abacus and perform some red-blooded American multiplication. So, we take our caloric averages and multiply them against their respective population. 176 adult males at a rate of 2,700 calories is a total of 475,200 per day. For the same number of adult females, the total is 369,600 calories per day. For the boys and girls, it's 42,000 and 31,200 calories per day respectively. Lastly, for our men and women in uniform, it's a whopping 870,400 calories per day to keep Stormwind's military plump and happy. That means that in order to feed the human population of Stormwind, all other races notwithstanding, everyone 
everyone's favorite Illyria Simp has to shell out 1,788,400 calories worth of food per day, and there are still several hundred other non-humans living in Stormwind that we haven't addressed. To close out these calculations, we're going to do something that I like to call jazz math, which is the kind of math that you just make up. Unfortunately, the National Institute of Health doesn't seem to have any information on the dietary necessities of dwarves, gnomes, or dragon turtles, which makes me wonder what my tax dollars are even being used for. For the 66 dwarves living in Stormwind will apply the same dietary needs as adult humans. Sure, they're shorter in stature, but do you really think that you get arms like that eating quinoa salads, you stupid nerd? It's gonna be 158,400 calories per day. What about the 45 gnomes? Yeah, that's a child's diet. 80,320 calories per day. For the various Draenei of Stormwind, of which there are 56, one of whom is a child, they'll need 133,700 calories per day, assuming that they eat at the same rate as humans. Then we have Void Elves, Night Elves, and High Elves. I mean, they all look the same to me. They'll be happily consuming 175,500 calories per day for thousands of years. Isn't that nice? Drakthir are especially annoying because their visage forms can be anything, so we're keeping it simple. 55,500 calories per day using the standard human metric. Pandaren are interesting because they're pandas, and they got patched into our version of the game about two to three million years ago. Thanks, God. These guys only eat 1,100 calories per day day, so for the 18 Pandaren and one Panda, 20,900 calories per day. Worgen are tough, because I could lump them into the human category and call it a day, but since I'm working with the literal in-game Stormwind, I think I have to treat them as they are, which is, you know, giant werewolves. I think it's safe to assume that they eat a little bit more than your average Joe. I'll give them a military-sized diet to fit their appetites, and apply a 22% reduction to account for the females. That amounts to 25,600 calories per day for our furry friends. Kul are also a head-scratcher, because some of them are obviously operating at a caloric surplus, while others are completely emaciated. Let's say that it all levels out to reflect average human rates. That's going to be 19,200 calories per day. The trolls in the harbor probably aren't getting a free lunch, but we'll give them a pass this time. That'll be 17,100 calories per day to feed Stormwind's foreign adversaries. The earth can eat rocks, literally. Zero calories per day, as far as I'm concerned. Finally, we get to the only goblin that I could find in Stormwind, hidden here in SI9. For Resnick, we'll apply a child's dietary needs, putting him at 2,000 calories per day. Altogether, that means that feeding the humanoid denizens of Stormwind requires a whopping 2,475,320 calories per day, and we're not even done. Cows, horses, griffins, let's add these things to the pile and see what we come up with. If we apply the standard nutritional requirements of horses at light work, then that means that these creatures individually need 25,000 calories daily. That's 600,000 calories a day for the griffins, 350,000 for the horses, and 250,000 for the dragon turtles. I'm going to lump the five dragonkin, five otherwise unspecified large animals, and one dinosaur into that category as well, putting in another 275,000 calories on the list. Finally, let's account for the six cows, who require 18,000 calories per day individually, putting them in a whopping 108,000 calories. Then we have the best animals in the world, dogs, who require about 700 calories each, putting them at 9,100 calories per day. Finally, let's add in Stormwind's cats, of which there are six, who consume about 300 calories individually for a total of 1,800 calories per day. This puts the daily caloric intake of all of Stormwind's denizens, human or otherwise, at a grand total of 4,044,220. Figuring out how much Stormwind needs to eat in order to sustain its existence was actually the easy part. Now we have to figure out if it's possible for Stormwind to grow or import the necessary amount of food to meet the demands of its inflated population. To determine this, we're going to need a few measurement tools. I found a mod on CurseForge by Pantherfield called Distance and Speed Miles, which isn't particularly sophisticated, but it perfectly accomplishes its namesake. It measures the distance and speed of your character's movement on the ground. Without this tool, I'm not sure that I would have been able to comfortably measure the various farmsteads surrounding Stormwind. With said measurements in hand, all I would need to do is visit calculator.net and convert the amounts from yards to square feet, then to acres to conclude exactly what the output yield of these patches of farmland provide. Keep in mind that while the fields are are visually small. Distance in World of Warcraft is measured in yards, so the measurements of each farmstead are larger than they appear. But the question remains, is it enough to cover Stormwind's gargantuan caloric needs? First, I began in Elwyn Forest by measuring the various farmsteads in the area. The Stonefield Farm, for example, is 105.6 yards by 105.6 yards, an even square. The McClure Vineyard and the Brackwell Pumpkin Patch are the same size. Converting yards to square feet, these three plots of land are 100,362.24 square feet. According to a quick Google search, 43,560 square feet represents a single acre, which means that the aforementioned farmsteads are 2.304 acres each. The Stonefield Farm produces moon harvest pumpkins, represented by the pumpkin models in the field. It's worth noting that Homer Stonefield sells apples, bananas, and watermelons, but I'm going to operate under the assumption that pumpkins are his primary crop and measure accordingly. For the sake of simplicity, we'll be assuming ideal conditions for the farm's yield. 
Now, according to the University of Vermont, the annual yield for pumpkins is 50,000 pounds per acre. At 2.304 acres, that's 115,200 pounds of moon harvest pumpkins, which gets to roughly 13,513,913 calories per year. Remember, this is an annual yield, so we still have a lot of ground to cover. The McClure Vineyard has the same acreage, but it's a vineyard. What do we get from vineyards, boys and girls? Grapes. According to vineyard yield estimates from Washington State University, ideal farm conditions will yield 5 tons of grapes per acre, equaling 11.52 tons of grapes, which totals out to 7,042,912 calories contributed annually. Now, as much as I'd love to add another 13 million calories to the total from the Brackwell pumpkin patch, that farmstead is totally occupied by bandits, and if I'm treating the world literally, then I can't see how Stormont is receiving another 115,200 pounds of pumpkins from the Brackwell farm. So, that's a goose egg. You're going to find that this is a humongous problem for the issue of feeding the people of Stormont. The Mirror Lake Orchard, for example, could be a reliable source of food, but it's occupied by bandits. Moving over to Westfall, the dead acre is 156,119.04 square feet, or 3.584 acres, but it's occupied by flesh rippers and harvesters, so nothing. Saldine's farm is 3.84 acres, but it's also overrun by hostile harvesters. The Molston farm, completely unusable. The Jansen stead, 1.296 acres of dead, four pixel crops. I watched the man murder a woman before her body was looted by children right on the farmstead, so I'm going to call this one a goose egg too. Duskwood has the rotting orchard, which would be the biggest plot of food producing land in the entire region, but it produces about as many apples as the views I'll get on this video. Please like and subscribe, I'm in pain. The only viable farmland in Westfall is Furlbrow's Pumpkin Farm, which represents 167,270.4 square feet, or 3.84 acres. That's 22,523,188 calories per annual yield of, you guessed it, pumpkins. Saving the best for last is the Wallerton Stead, the only piece of farmland within the city of Stormwind at 66,908.16 square feet or 1.536 acres. A lot of you might be asking, wait, isn't that a lot smaller than the other farmsteads? It is, but the Wallertons own six cows which produce, according to MidwestDairy.com, a whopping 6.5 gallons of milk per day. So while their annual crop yield is only 76,800 pumpkins, representing 9,009,277 calories, their cows contribute a total of 23,454,348 calories in milk for a total of 32,463,625. All right, I just threw a lot of numbers at you. So before we start speculating on the potential of food imports via Stormwind Harbor, let's add up our caloric totals. From the Stonefield Farm, the McClure Vineyard, Furlbrow's Pumpkin Farm, and the Wallerton said, we get a grand total of 75,543,638 calories. Now, some of you might be thinking, we only need 4,044,220 calories per day to keep Stormwind alive, and 75 million is a lot more than that, right? Remember, these farmsteads yield their crops annually, so the number to beat is not the 4 million calorie figure I just quoted. Rather, the annual caloric consumption of Stormwind is 1,400,000. 76,140,300 calories. That is not enough. We'd be a lot closer if the state of affairs in Westfall and Duskwood were improved, but as of right now, we are at 19.54% of the necessary amount of food that it would take to feed the 1,069 things that eat in Stormwind. Now the question is, can Stormwind's importing operation cover the 80.45% caloric deficit of the city? We have to assume that there is some importing taking place based on the goods that are sold within the city. For example, Innkeeper Allison's food selection includes cherry pie, tundra berries, pomegranates, figs. We know, based on what we've already talked about, that these ingredients can't possibly be native to the land surrounding Stormwind. So how do we determine how much food can be delivered to Stormwind every day? First, we have to ask, is Stormwind actually receiving supplies from overseas? The answer is an unequivocal equivocal yes. These supplies are actually visible if you visit the harbor. You'll find piles of medical supplies, weapons, crates with food, barrels presumably filled with various liquids, and dozens of dock workers to move them into the city. So we have to determine exactly how much each ship could reasonably carry in its hull. Unfortunately for us, none of the ships give players access to the space below deck, making that measurement difficult to find. I notice that the lower halves of ships that come into port are shaped like trapezoids. The central length of the ship serves as the first base, while the length at the lowest point of the ship can serve as the second base. Then, of course, we measure the height of the space between the the two bases and the length from either side of the ship. As I'm sure you all remember from geometry, the formula for the volume of a trapezoid is half times height times base one plus base two times length. With that, we establish our values by converting them to feet rather than yards. Base one is 316.8 feet, while base two is 211.2 feet. The height of the hull is 52.8 feet, while the length across is 105.6 feet. That's a lot of feet, Blizzard. Remember, these are rough measurements using an in-game mod, but it's what we have to work with. If you plug in the numbers and do the math, you 
you get 1,471,980 cubic feet. Now, assuming that half of the hull is used for medical supplies and weapons, we can cut that portion away and say that 735,990 cubic feet can be allocated for foodstuffs. But remember, based on these barrels, there's reason to believe that a portion of each shipment contains liquids. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to presume that they carry fresh water, which will account for zero calories. That leaves 367,995 cubic feet dedicated to foodstuffs. According to Wikipedia, one ton of general cargo is 40 cubic feet, so we divide 367,995 cubic feet by 40 to find our conclusion. 9,199.875 tons of foodstuffs per ship. We've been measuring the output yield of the various farmsteads around Stormwind using pumpkins, so we'll continue accordingly. 9,199.875 tons of pumpkins equals 2,158,445,000 312 calories per ship. At a rate of about five minutes per trip, a single ship docks in Stormwind Harbor 288 times per 24 hours. Assuming that only one of these ships is a cargo ship rather than a passenger ship, Stormwind would receive enough food in a day to cover nearly half of its annual caloric needs. That's 68.39% of the total, not including the 19.54% contribution from its own local farmsteads. If only two ships per year carried food in the hull, then the answer to the title of this video is clear. Stormwind's food comes from its harbor. Now, a lot of assumptions have to be made in order to arrive at this conclusion, chief among them that I did the math correctly. But there's also the assumption that food would be transported towards the city at all. You see, what we've demonstrated here is that without an overseas shipping operation, Stormwind would be woefully underfed, with each citizen needing to eat only a fifth of his or her required caloric intake in order to sustain the population, which would be a miserable experience. Plus, importing doesn't exist without exporting, and Stormwind produces incredibly little compared compared to what it would likely receive from foreign shipments. It would be impossible to determine what these trade deals even look like. We are veering dangerously close to total headcanon. Either way, I'm just relieved to finally have an answer to this question that has haunted me for days and that has driven dozens of hours of research, calculations, revisions, editing. Finally, we can be sure that Stormin has a feasible way to sustain its population's caloric demands with the power of... Oh. Oh, I forgot about that. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. This video was such a ridiculous, unnecessary, but extremely fun exercise for me, and I hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Quick order of business. First, a massive shout out to JG Chowder for sponsoring this video on Patreon. Remember, if you like videos about MMOs and all things games, and get all videos two days early and ad-free for only $1 a month on Patreon, it's the best deal in town. As always, tradition dictates a few unscripted words before we say goodbye. Not a lot to say here, guys. I'm trying to hit a weekly video cadence, and I hope that I can keep that up for as long as possible. I can't promise video like this every single time, but I'm going to do my best to provide you with the best content that you can find on YouTube. Listen, this video is a huge labor of love, so if you want to say thank you in an easy way, leaving a like or a subscription could really do the trick. Alright guys, minding my manners, of course, thanks for watching.